This is the eagle. This is the champion. This is Habib Abdomanopovich Nurmagomedov. His style of grappling makes him one of the most dominant forces in UFC history. Right. Habib Nurmagomedov. Habib hails from a small district in Dagestan, Russia. Well, when you see a guy like Khabib Nurmagomedov mm -hmm. just run through people in the UFC and you know where that guy's from, you gotta go, well, how many more of those guys are over there? At age nine, he began bear wrestling to strengthen his grappling. Yeah, that's Habib grappling with an unmuzzled bear. Trained in judo, sambo, and wrestling. In all seriousness, no, uh, Dagestan, Russia, Kenny, for those that don't know, really is a wrestling mecca, and, and he's just the latest in, in a long line of talented wrestlers. The early fights of Habib's career were only slightly more one-sided than his latter fights. As Habib's next level ground game was simply too much for the opposition. His father was a Ukrainian Sambo champ, a judo black belt, and the national master of sports and freestyle wrestling. All of these skills were imparted to young Habib. He dominated the national circuit. Two-time Russian combat Sambo champion, two-time world Sambo champion. He is known as an internationally recognized Sambo master. Sambo is a very exciting style of martial arts. If you're not familiar with it, um, combat Sambo that they uh, compete in, they wear a, a jacket, like a judo gi type jacket, uh, but they kick and punch and they wear headgear. Becoming a recognized Sambo master and two-time world Sambo champ. Nurmagomedov is another one of these Russian fighters who comes from a Excellent Sambo background. He carried this skill set into his professional career. But really, from day one, Nervango Medov has been ready for prime time. So much confidence in his preparation, his work ethic, his team that goes 25 or 30 deep. He's an outstanding grappler, a very good striker as well. Very, uh, very intriguing martial arts style. Storming through his first seven opponents. And it's one of those things where you see that guy, in the beginning guys fight him off a little bit, and then as the fight wears on, he just gets more and more dominant. They get more and more exhausted. But for now, this is the man. This is the most dominant fighter. And I, and I, and I know that's a big statement, but I feel very comfortable saying that statement. Strengthened by his environment, the ferocity of Habib's training had grown into a local legend. Substance over style, the methods of Habib are not glamorous. So Khabib comes in, he's got five guys. What the workout is going to be is one by one, Khabib is going to work out with each guy until each guy gives up.
My coach said the workout was 90 minutes. The first guy was the most talented guy, made it 20. Watch how long it takes this camera guy to show us the round number. Boom, perfect timing. Now make a man off go. Habib's training turned him into a relentless pressure machine. Yeah, his grappling is literally on another level. It's completely advanced. When he grabs a hold of guys, you see talented grapplers, guys along those lines just get dominated. From the opening horn, he attacks bringing his opponents to the ground, then emptying their tanks. Ten, eight rounds against different guys, finishing different guys, only losing one round, taking fights on short notice, taking on former world champions. But man, Nurmagomedov's just cracked It's just here. relentless here. And it's all technique, Mike. I mean, he's obviously very strong as well, but his technique is stellar. He's always in the correct position. Breaking one fighter after the next, building a perfect 16 and 0 record. Nurmagomedov is just so relentless on the ground. As he set aim toward joining the UFC. And your winner by technical knockout victory, Shabby! Oh. If you look at every picture of Khabib right after his fight, like when his hand is being raised, there is never a mark on his face. There isn't a lot of flash in Khabib's training. Grueling distance runs. Altitudes of 2,000 meters above sea level. Often in freezing temperatures. It's old school, time tested, hard work. But the results of this training speak for themselves. <laughs> well, Kenny, just as he did at the weigh-in, Habib Nurmagomedov really attached to that wig, U.S. and go, UFC debut, and has never fought in a cage before. So, certainly expect some sort of adjustment period as Nurmagomedov gets his first taste of the octagon. Yeah, all of his fights have been in Russia. He's used to the ring, and it is very different. As we know, just the strategy of not being able to sprawl fully against the cage. Habib, the Eagle, Nurmagomedov! In his first UFC fight, Habib demonstrated to the world what those in his homeland already knew. He was a different kind of beast. But uh, Nurmagomedov just, just mauled him. Mauled him. I mean, mauled him in a way that you go, oh, God. You're not even there. And this could be bad, bad news for Shalorusin. 
Magomedov trying to get that rear naked choke. He's kind of in an awkward position, but... Stop, 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 stop. That's it. So the UFC and US debut for Habib Nurmagomedov goes according to plan. Welcome to America. Habib, the Eagle. what that wig is all about, but uh, he insisted on wearing it in the weigh-ins, and he insists on wearing it here. All I know is that this dude can fight his ass off. This man is a combat sambo fighter, holding a perfect professional record. 18 wins, no losses. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Habib, the Eagle, Nurmagomedov! The lovely Brittany, she's an animal. Yes, sir. In his next fight, his striking ability was on full display. Magomedov really leaping in with some of those strikes with that leaping left hook. There's that shot. It was a leaping uppercut, it looked like, with that lead hand. Magomedov really dropping bombs now with those elbows. And Tavares is all but out here. That'll do it. Habib Nurmagomedov. Wow. How good is that kid, Ken? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? If you're champion, if you want to be champion, undisputed, undefeated, you have to can, can beat anybody. And you know. In his fourth UFC fight, Habib would get into a minor pre-fight scuffle with his opponent. Habib! Well, Trujillo put his forehead on the forehead of Nurmagomedov, and Nurmagomedov pushed him off, and it was a, there was a lot of tension. The fight would be a statement for Habib. From Las Vegas for UFC 160. between these two men. He set the record for the most takedowns in a single fight with 21. Two minutes on the clock. Going for a ride. Tossing Trujillo around a little bit here in the first. Man, a nice left hook in there by, by Nurmagomedov. Man, Nurmagomedov is just here. relentless here. Again, takes him down. 13 takedowns in this fight. Second most in UFC history. Abel just put his hands up, but he was frustrated. He can't be frustrated. He's getting beat up. See how he did that? Put his hand up like, oh, man, what? You, you can't do that. It's not like the guy's not doing anything. He's kicking your ass. You can't even think like that. That's a mental weakness to even make that gesture. American collegiate wrestler. Yeah, Norma Gamelak is really something special when it comes to grappling, though. In that fight that you mentioned against Trujillo, Joe, Norma Gomedov turned in a UFC record 21 takedowns. Final seconds of the fight. Why not? Beautiful throw. Trujillo back up to his feet again. Down again. I mean, that was a balling. That's absolutely a clinic that we just displayed. Khabib, the Eagle, Nirmago Meta. He moves to 20 and 0 in his professional mixed martial arts career. When you see somebody, you know, Jordan in his part. Enough, it was like he was the only one in the cage. He pig slammed Pat Healy. Right back on him like a dog. And here's the pig slam. Another beat down. 21 and 0. Here are grappling 
specialists, and then there are grappling specialists like Habib Nurmagomedov. This guy is on another level. The Eagle has soared to a 21 and 0 start. Habib, the Eagle, Nurmagomedov! Here we go! He closes the distance, he's got the clinch. This will tell us a lot here. Can Dos Anjos avoid this? Look at the way he does it. Yes. He's just so, so strong in that clinch. Khabib takes oh my God. everybody, everybody who's good. Rafael Dos Anjos, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Black Belt World Champion. Ragdolls him. Got the clinch again and drags him to the ground. Khabib! Demolishing. Errol, don't forget about uh, who he's taken on as well. I mean, this is right. the absolute best of the best. Habib imposed his will. And so when you consider the record, no one who has fought in the UFC has ever started that kind of career like that. During this time, Habib suffered a series of injuries that continued to keep him out of the cage. Sorry, your point was out almost two years. Yeah, it was a long time and a bunch of pretty significant injuries where he couldn't really train that well. He showed a little rust at the onset. There was that one moment against Michael Johnson at UFC 205 where Michael seemed to rock him a little bit, and people still talk about that one Here moment. We go. Like the one moment where he kind of had wobbly legs. Oh, he tapped him. He hurt him back again. Nurmagomedov is hurt right now. He's wobbly and hurt. You know, even if you hit him, congratulations. Now you're on your ass. And you're getting punched in the face over and over again. You can't get up. You're getting mauled. And when he gets a hold of people, it almost seems like they're shocked at how strong he is. And up was opening up. Well, didn't you hear when he was fighting Johnson? Yes, I think, he's telling yeah. give up. Give yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I need that title shot. Give up. Move, Mike. It's when you look at them in between rounds and you see that like, what am I doing in here? That's when you know. They're talking to each other. I do not know what they're saying. Big John right on top of it. I think Big John can stop this fight at any moment. Yeah. To your point, yes, he's the most dominant and I really don't know that we have seen all the skills that he possesses. There we go, Medoff. Full mount. Full mount with the right arm trapped. You notice how he does that all the time? He traps arms. He's looking for the overhook. He's tying it up. That's exactly what he's doing. He's turning the corner. He's going to get it right here. This should be it. Michael should tap or he's going to break his arm. He's going to break his arm. Hit his all over. Habib Nurmagomedov. Moves to 24 and 0. Habib Nurmagomedov just came running over to Dana White and was demanding to get a shot at the title. And after a performance like this, how can you deny this man? Hey guys, 10 years, 10 years amateur fighter. Eight, eight years undefeated pro, pro MMA fighter. But nobody catch me. Next up, the highly anticipated matchup with Edson Barboza.
one of the most lethal strikers the UFC has ever known. Khabib, the eagle, the Morgan And it, against an excellent fighter. Excellent. I can't forget, yeah. Barbosa is amazing. Amazing. The way he stays on top, the way he lassos those knees so you can't get away, and then there's just so much punishment on him. He's just on such another level that you, the odds of you beating him drop so substantially after the first minute and a half. Like, this is so next level. At last, Habib would fight for the UFC title. And look at this. Just as soon as he gets the ankle, there's no escape. It's a crocodile. He's got a hold of you, and now you're in the water hole. Beasted him down. Beasted him. And it's amazing to hear the fellow lightweights talk about Nurmagomedov and the reverence. It's awe. They're in awe of him when you talk about him. They're like, man. Just tremendous strength and technique. A lethal combination. To be great in this sport is, is hard enough. To be elite is so rare. To be really feared is something special. Crocodile diving for that single leg. This man is now 12-0 in the UFC. But he continues to just destroy and dominate the best lightweights in the world. Gangster. He come here. Where's Connor? He he want to fight with Bass. I want to fight with real gangster. You know. After Connor McGregor attacked Habib's bus at a UFC event, he was arrested. This has become personal for you. Of course. Long time ago. It's entirely possible that New York's going to prosecute him. All right. All right. He threw a dolly at a car. People yeah. got their eyes cut, their face cut. But the bad blood between Habib and Connor made for excellent I marketing. Say, I'm thankful to the DA and the judge for allowing me to move forward. After years of back and forth, a super fight was finally set. Connor versus Habib. Habib relished the chance to demolish the cocky McGregor. Tomorrow night, I'm gonna smash your boy, guys. I'm gonna smash your boy. It was the highest purchase pay-per-view UFC fight ever. As the fans flocked to see if Connor could return from his absence and recapture the title he vacated. However, Khabib was a new beast, undefeated. No signs of a weakness in his game. I dominated you, I made you quit, I made you tap. It was humiliating, it was embarrassing. It was straight ownage. Let's go, Let's go. 
Connor was unable to stay on his feet, and on the ground, Khabib was in a class of his own. All the name calling, all the Twitter yapping from Connor, all the threats, it does not change that. right hand from a teammate inside the octagon after losing a mixed martial arts fight. No, that was disgusting. There was two things disgusting. Khabib jumping out of the octagon and attacking doing Dennis was foolish. But, but Khabib's friends jumping into the octagon and attacking Connor, who had no idea that they were there, just jumped on him. It was completely cowardly. 27-0, undefeated, undisputed UFC lightweight champion. Do you start to put yourself in the conversation as the greatest fighter of all time, Habib. This is the main event of the evening. And with that, we are underway. Habib Nurmagomedov in the black and gold. Dustin Poirier is in the blue with gold. Poirier is feeling that vain Nurmagomedov pressure. During his career, Habib has taken on all comers. He is rarely challenged, controlling every moment of the fight. He's already made the case for greatest fighter ever. But over the next few years, he has a chance to cement it. Oh, he's oh. under the net. Oh, it's, it. over. It. Oh, it's, it's over. over. It's, it's over. over. It's over. It's, it's over. over. It's, it's over. over. It's it's over. 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 It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. Under the chin, there's the top! Khabib Nurmagomedov, 28-0! Incredible. Absolutely incredible the way he the UFC lightweight champion of the world, Habib, the Eagle, Habib's father passed away shortly after this fight. Нам неизвестно, сколько человек проживет. Мы должны быть готовы сегодня, завтра, чтобы нас понесли, хоронит. Мы должны быть готовы к этому. И ничего страшного в этом нет. The man who had shaped and built the greatest fighter in UFC history was gone. Because having your father in your corner as somebody there uh, to drive and motivate you, but also the ultimate problem solver should one come up, and now that falls to you. Just like that. One day you wake up and you got to figure that out on your own. The bond between father and son cannot be overstated. And there was doubt if Habib would ever return. But Habib knew his father wouldn't want him to back away from his final fight. With a heavy heart, Habib arrived at Fight Island with his 29th victory in sight. A lot of people call me pound for pound number one fighter. I want to be like most dominant fighter in UFC history. This is my dream. This is the main event of the evening. Live from UFC Fight Island in Abu Dhabi. He fought in his father's memory. He fought like the best fighter on the planet. Right into the full mount. I mean, that was a fantastic transition with a lot of time. And as he had done 28 times before, he beat and broke his opponent down and captured another victory. <laughs> Twenty nine and oh. It was an emotionally charged moment for the Eagle. And still undefeated and the UFC undisputed lightweight champion of the world. He retired.
retired immediately after the fight. After what happened with my father, when you actually called me about Justin, I talked with my father, my, my mother, three days. She don't want to go fight without father, but I promise her it's going to be my last fight. And if I give my word, I have to follow this. To be great in this sport is, is hard enough. To be elite is so rare. To be really feared is something special. I dominated you. I made you quit. I made you tap. It was humiliating. It was embarrassing. You're about to bet off really dropping bombs now. So next level. Walking away as the undisputed baddest man on the planet. Nobody brings it home like Joe Vincent. Nobody.